Welcome back everyone. My name is Mike and this is Lesson 3 of the Visual Studio 2013 C Sharp Programming for Beginner Tutorial Series. Now if you were with us in Lesson 2, you saw how we created a console application that displayed a simple Hello World message to the user at the console window. Now in this lesson, Lesson 3, we're going to create a similar application that displays Hello World to the user, but this time it will be done using a uh, Windows Form template in Visual Studio 2013. So let's go ahead and open Visual Studio to get started. We'll close that start page, go to File, New Project. And we're going to choose the Windows Forms application under the Visual C Sharp Windows category. For the project name, we're going to call this a Windows Form app. For the solution name, it'll be similar to the way we labeled the previous lessons folder. It'll be VS2013 C Sharp, since that's the programming language we're using, and underscore, and the lesson, which will be lesson three. We'll leave the create directory for solution checked and hit OK. Now Windows will go ahead and use that template to generate a uh, foundation for this program. And what it does by default is set up a initial form that we can use to uh, do whatever it is we want to do in this in this project. So a couple of things I want to make you aware of. Um, uh, first of all, <clears throat> there are a couple of properties we need to go over with a form uh, that are pretty common, uh, and you're going to see that quite a bit, have to modify these. So first is the form name itself. Now, originally these properties down here were listed in categories like this, and I went ahead and changed my setup to list it alphabetically from A to Z, and that's this button right here. If you click that, it'll sort everything A to Z. And I know that the uh, doing that, the uh, form name will show up at the very top of the list because it's such a common one. They actually list it on the top, even though it's alphabetically not in order. But if you need to find any other property on that form to change or modify, such as the width, the size, the background color, auto scroll property, things like that, it's all listed alphabetically and, and it's very easy to find once you start learning what these uh, methods or properties are. So uh, with that, we'll uh, name our form. A good naming convention for forms uh, or naming in general, uh, especially with a form, is to prefix it with either just the letter F or uh, FRM. Now, I prefer FRM to represent form. This is our main form for this application, so I'll use the word main. So form main is going to be the name of that form. Now, if we scroll down here to the text property, the text property is what shows up, what we call in the uh, title bar of the form. That's where currently it's, it's showing form one here. We can change that to our first Windows Form app and hit enter. And that'll change there on the screen. And so uh, this designer actually gives you instant results when you're laying out your forms using this method like this. Now, there's a couple of different ways that we can display a message to the user. Uh, one is through uh, a pop-up similar to a uh, um, like a message box is what we call it in, in, in Visual Studio. Uh, but if you've seen, them, seen this in other apps as well. Anytime there's any kind of alert or a message or some kind of prompt, something that the application needs to notify the user of, you get a pop-up that indicates that. Uh, so we'll use something called a message box, which is going to require the user to click OK to close that before they can do anything else. And in that message box, we'll display a Hello World message. So um, now we want that triggered. There's a couple different ways we can do it, but the first thing I want to show you is uh, we'll set this up so that if you click on the form when the app is running, it will pop up this message box with Hello World in it. So in order to get access to that action, um, we want to look at the events that are associated with the form. Now where you can see that, when you click on the form, you make sure it's you see it's selected here in the designer window. You go to the right here, and you've got this uh, lightning bolt. And if you hover over it, it, show, it sh says events. If you click on that, 
you'll get an alphabetical listing of all the events that you can that can be triggered on this form and that you can write code for the one that we're interested in is click it's when you click the mouse on that form um, and, and not on a control that'll be on the form like such as a button a list box maybe a drop down box a radio button something else we'll get into in a future lesson but uh, this is directly on the form itself on the on the foundation of the form so um, in order to have Visual Studio auto generate a method handler for this event all we have to do is double click over here to the right in the in the blank area we can click once to make sure it's selected and then double click here and you'll see real quick it generated form main underscore click which is based on the name of the form that we we used um, and underscore and click which is the event and it passed us some information in here uh, that we actually won't need at this point in time but we'll get into some of that later if it's needed now message boxes is, is a method call that's built into uh, one of the namespaces that's already listed for us in this Windows form template so we won't need to add any special using uh, namespace st statement at all we can go ahead and just start typing message box that's our class name and then hit dot and there's a method called show and then we hit the open parentheses and in quotations we're going to put the literal string that we want to show up and in this case it's our hello world application so very very similar to uh, what we did in the console application it was a one-line statement to generate that hello world again Visual Studio .NET framework and the libraries that Microsoft has developed make this easy to do like that um, in the traditional programming model prior to the visual studio days you would have to write a lot more code to just display a message uh, as simple as hello world so we got to thank them for that so with that said let's go ahead and do file save all and do build rebuild solution we're going to make sure we have a success which we do no failures no skip and we can go ahead and run that. Now, since this is a Windows form app, um, we should be able to run it right through the environment here. We don't have to drop out to a command window like we did in the previous tutorial because we we're doing a console app then. This is a Windows app or a form app that will run in Windows. So if we hit start, you see there's our app. And it stays open until we, right now, click the X. That's the only way we have to close it. But let's run that again. And now if we click anywhere on the form, You'll see we get a hello world that pops up. So I can't click past it. This is uh, a special do system dialog pop-up that comes up. It requires the user to click OK to close that. And we can click, as you can see, anywhere on this form to generate this. So that's one way to do it. Now, the other way to do this is we could create what's called a label go back to our designer here and we're going to use if you look on the left here there's a toolbox we're going to use a, uh, the toolbox pop that out and we'll go to the common controls and we're going to use <clears throat> a pretty common control that uh, is out there it's called a label we'll click on it we just drag it drop it on our form and there's our label control and we could is one way to display this message now you saw I double click that form just double clicked and what that does by default there's an event called load and what the load event does is when the form load is loaded into memory in the system when you're actually running this program it loads in the memory first and then it's displayed to the user so there is a special event called load where you can write code to do certain things you want to do before the user actually sees that form and so that's the event we're going to use to display hello world in our label that we just dropped on the form now in order to do that we will need to know the name of the label and, and let's go ahead and rename that label just to be consistent we'll go back to the properties we'll make sure we're clicked on label and 
by default it's label one. Again, we like the prefix it with three letters. That's pretty common when you're uh, naming controls or forms. We use LBL for label, and we'll say message. You notice I'm using what's called a camel case. It's lowercase to begin with, LBL, and then the next word, even if it's a multi-word like message box, it would be capital M, everything else lowercase, and message, and box, capital B, small ox. So you use that camel case, which is that upper and lowercase syntax, um, as a standard naming convention to make it consistent throughout your programs. So we've got it labeled as label message, and if we scroll down, you'll see there's also a text property called label one. Now, currently that's what's showing on the screen there. So if we were to change this to whatever we'd like, but for now I'm just going to put message just to change it. You'll see it updates it. And that's where the message is going to sh will show up. So what we'll do is uh, let's double click this form again. And so we're actually going to be changing that label text property before, while it's being while the form is being loaded before the user actually sees it come you know on the screen as a visual form so um, in order to do that the syntax is the the control name which is the label we called it label message then you hit dot and then you access the property that we want to change which is text now some properties are read only and you cannot change them but text is a property that you cannot you can read it or you can modify it you want to, if you want to display it somewhere, you can access the contents of it. Um, if you need to change it in this case, which is what we're doing, it lets you do that just by using a standard assignment statement, which is the equal sign. And in quotations, we'll put the new value. So we could say, hello world there. And again, end that statement with a semicolon, just like we did with the message box. So let's, uh, I'm going to hit F5, that will automatically save, compile, and uh, load that form. And you see it immediately, before you even saw it change what we had before there, it, it modified that in the load event, changed it to a low world. And then, of course, the form became visible after Windows did whatever it had to do when this was launching. So uh, now our other event is still available the click event on the on the win, on the main form we can click anywhere we can still pop up hello world and so that's being triggered uh, these are called event handlers um, the actual action or event is a click in this case there was an, a an event called load that's that's automatically uh, executed in the background it's, it's really not a, a user interaction type thing it just happens before the form loads up or, or is displayed so um, it's good to be aware of some of these events that are available and, and the event handlers that you can set up. Uh, now the load is commonly used to pre-populate information on a form. So if you've ever seen an application that you click on something and you're, let's say, loading customer information and, and, the, and that form pops up, it already has that customer informa information there. What's happening is it's set, uh, whoever developed that program <coughs> set up a, a load event here, an event handler, and wrote the code that accesses the database, reads the information it needs for that customer record, assigns it to all the, the properties, the text properties, or whatever kind of controls they're using, uh, loads that data in those controls um, before the, the form is actually displayed to the user. Uh, there's other ways to do it. I mean, you can't actually load the form and have, have it blank and then have them click the user click a button that then loads that form and they kind of see it load. Um, it really doesn't matter how you do it. It's going to be a preference of the designer of the application and uh, either way is uh, acceptable. It just, just depends on uh, your application and your circumstances. So that's pretty much uh, two different ways you can display a message. One using the label and one using uh, the click event of a uh, of the form. Now I want to show you one other thing. We're gonna since this is a Windows form app, we have the ability to use another common tool. We have to have the form open to do that. Click toolbox, and it's a button. Now everyone's seen a button. You've seen them in apps all over. You click a button, it does some kind of action. 
And it also has a an event called cl uh, clicked. And it also has a name, which we're going to change that first. Again, BTN is a standard prefix for buttons, and then you can call it whatever you want. And we'll say, call it display message, MSG. That's going to be the name of our button. Now, the current caption that's on there is just button one. Well, I'm using caption. That's actually a term from previous iterations of Visual Studio, but they've uh, been pretty consistent now in changing all this and making it the same throughout all the controls. Text is the name of the property now. Uh, anytime it has any kind of a label on a control or a you know some kind of visible uh, text that sh that's shown to the user, uh, they've pretty kept it consistent and it's the property is called text on all these controls. So anyways we're gonna change that. It says button one <clears throat> and we can just type in Display message is what we want to show there. So we'll have a button that has the word display message on or the phrase display message. <coughs> and we're going to set this up that when the user clicks on it, it'll pop up a, use the message box that show just to pop up a message. So if we double click that button, again, since the click is the most common event that's triggered for a button, by default, Visual Studio will auto-generate the skeleton code for you and build your your uh, click event handler which it named button display message underscore click and again we won't really get into these are called parameters or arguments that are being passed into this uh, function caller event handler and they can be used <clears throat> and this here is actually the return type it says void means we're not going to return back anything back to the program that called this event handler. Uh, all we're doing is executing the code within this event handler, and that's it. Uh, private indicates that it's a private event handler, meaning it can only be executed within a uh, within this class right here, a form main. Everything that's located between this bracket and this bracket, that's your class, opening, closing brackets, and... Uh, <clears throat> So any of these procedures or event handlers in here can call this event handler, uh, and that's all it means. It, um, so if can I say had two a second form, the second form could not call your to click event here with it being private because it's it just means that it can be called within this class definition. Anyway, so uh, enough on that. Let's stick to what we're doing here, which is. We're going to copy this just to make it simple. We'll just copy that line, message box that show hello world. And we'll copy this one as well because we'll we'll have this button when we click it, it'll do both. It will oops. Let me undo that. I did something here wrong. Boom. Okay. Control C. I started to overwrite that label message that text line. Okay. So See when uh, when we when the user clicks this display message button, it'll execute the message box that show display hello world, and also assign hello world to the text property of the control called label message or LBL message that's on our form. So again, we'll click and run that. Of course, this label is being set in the form load. So let's let's do this. Let's comment out. If you want to comment out a line of code, um, you can do slash slash, two forward slashes in front. You'll see it turns green. That means it's commented out. The uh, That line of code will not be executed. It won't be compiled or built into your program. It'll just bypass it. It'll treat it like a comment. Um, and actually slash slash like that is used to comment code throughout. Uh, anytime you're writing code, you want to comment your code to make sure you remember what you did, but also if you have others that are following behind you looking at your code, they can easily follow it as well. So we could just put down here display message box and set label text. 
those are the two things we're doing there, and that's not a simple example of a comment. So we'll hit start, it'll build. If it's everything's good, it just automatically runs. If there were errors, it would have stopped down in the uh, down at the bottom in the output window and show the, the errors. Okay, so we left it now since we commented out that one line on the in the form load event handler, it's leaving this label text as message or the default what we had set up down in the property window before on the right side. So now if we click display message now, this is a button that we added. We click display message. It does the hello world. You notice it hasn't updated the label yet. And that's because this hello world was the line of code that was put was listed first. You can see that message box that show hello world. And the user has to actually click OK before execution of the program continues. So if you ever need a way to kind of force the user to click on something before it continues, message box that show is great for that. So now when we hit OK, you see it immediately executed the next line of code, which was label message that text hello world, and this it updated the text property of that message box. So and that wrote so that's another way to do it um, now we we actually added these controls through let's go ahead and close that we added these controls through the toolbox by opening the form in, in our view here in our code editor design editor and then clicking toolbox and dragging those over in the next lesson we're gonna do something a little bit different um, but I'd like to show you how to create those controls uh, what we call dynamically which is directly in code so rather than drag and drop a button or a label from the toolbox we will just generate those in code and add them to the form in code and even set up what we call the event handlers um, where we just kind of clicked and before on the right here and then you know in this form load and it automatically generated well we're going to set those up ourselves uh, in code so um, we'll start from scratch in, in, in the next lesson and do a similar similar app like this but show how it can be done directly in code uh, I think it's good to understand <clears throat> how to generate controls on the fly uh, through code that's that's a great way to generate stuff and understand what's going on behind the scenes kind of under the hood so uh, we'll do that in the next lesson and uh, I hope to see you there and uh, once we finish that lesson we'll continue on and get finally into basic data types and how to define and use variables in your program so uh, originally that stuff was scheduled or slated for lesson two but um, after I went through the initial video tutorial, trying to cram all that into one video, I wound up with a pretty lengthy video, and uh, uh, it was almost 40 to 50 minutes long, and I decided to break it up into smaller lessons, so um, I think it's going to be easier for you all to go through that stuff that way. Anyways, that's the end of uh, lesson three. I won't hold you any further. Hope to see you in lesson four. Thanks.